As you know, Elon Musk has postponed his trip to India, citing very heavy Tesla obligations. Remember, Tesla has now laid off over 14,000 employees, which is 10% of their global workforce, including top executives. And they've talked about um, the reason for this is cost reduction. So, uh, with Tesla doing this, what does all of this mean for the Indian EV ecosystem? And are we staring at a two-pronged issue? One, falling sales. And two, a threat from Chinese players like Baidi, which is an issue that uh, you know Tesla is also facing. Jay Kale of Velara Capital is joining in, and in a bit we'll get uh, another player of this ecosystem. Jay, thanks a lot for joining in. You know, Tesla raises uh, what's happening with Tesla raises a larger issue that of a global EV slowdown, and we've seen that in some form play out in our own market as well. I mean, EV passenger vehicle penetration is barely two and a half percent. Your thoughts on how all of this could you know? Uh, move forward from here. Yeah, uh, good morning, Sonia. Uh, yes, you know, definitely globally, if you see the EV penetration uh, has to a certain extent, uh, EV growth has to a certain extent slowed down. But nonetheless, if you see CY23, the global EV penetration, uh, PHEV and BEVs including is around 15.8%, uh, which had moved up from 13%. So the pace of growth has uh, moderated, but the pay penetration increases uh, story is still going on in terms of uh, EVs uh, globally. If I have to talk of India, uh, yes, you know, it, currently, like you mentioned, we are at a very small 2% EV penetration uh, in India. Uh, and uh, one main thing is that we don't have as many models uh, for EVs, uh, meaningful models uh, for EVs, barring two, three players. And in the next one year, we are expecting to see a, a lot many players entering into the space, be it uh, incremental models from Mahindra, Maruti, Hyundai, all of these players. So, uh, as far as India goes, uh, EV penetration is only expected to increase from here. Our assumption is that by 530, uh, we are expecting uh, EV penetration closer to around 15 odd percent. Uh, so, that is definitely much higher than 2% uh, that we are, uh, are currently at. And that will be led by incremental new model launches. The issues okay. of charging infrastructure, etc. Uh, still remain. And that will uh, progressively get sorted. Okay, so it's interesting. You're saying that uh, the EV penetration is expected to increase from 2.5% currently in the passenger vehicle space to 15% by FY30. And a large reason for lower demand is because there are just not enough models, not enough launches in the EV market in India. Got it. But you know, I, the a question that I was asking Ravi Dharamshi a while back, um, uh, the, uh, the fact that Tesla is sort of delaying their visit, Elon Musk delaying his visit, Tesla perhaps pushing forward their plans as well, do you think that is a positive for players like Tata Motors or is it too simplistic an assumption? I think it would be too simple. You know, uh, any which way Tesla coming into India was not, uh, you know, in a meaningful way in terms of manufacturing was not going to happen in the next one or two years. Of course, we know the EV policy over the next three to five years, they would be setting up manufacturing ca capacities, if at all, uh, in India. Uh, prior to that, there will be more of uh, imports uh, restricted to around 8,000 units uh, per annum. Uh, so I think we have to look at this space from a more from a longer term perspective rather than the next one or two year perspective. And Tesla coming to India, uh, if at all and whenever it happens, uh, it is going to be a positive for the overall ecosystem. Uh, wherever Tesla has gone, uh, it has you know increased the penetration levels of EVs in that country because the overall ecosystem, the awareness around, around EVs, the charging infrastructure, uh, that gets developed around it is a positive for the overall uh, EV ecosystem. And one needs to look at how this pans out over the next three to five years rather than the next six to eight months, even if there is any delay in uh, Tesla coming to India. Okay, got it. Uh, I want to talk about Chinese automakers and the big threat there, right? Understandably, Chinese automakers are a big threat to the uh, auto industry in the US, that is the EV industry there. But is it fair to assume that uh, China is a big threat to India as well? I mean, I was looking at some data, right? The price gap has widened considerably. Considerably, The average retail price of an EV car in China is now less than half the price seen both in Europe and the US. Uh, what does this mean for a market like India? I think Chinese are, uh, you know, something that we need, really need to watch out for uh, from a global perspective also, I think. Uh, Chinese have the potential to disrupt many of the global uh, EV makers uh, as well. Uh, and we've seen that uh, them are trying to enter into Europe, uh, US, of course, there are a lot of tariffs on Chinese players. In India, uh, you know, that's something that we need to watch out for. Uh, definitely, you know, government has put on hold uh, the Chinese investments of PYD. We've seen reports of uh, that as well. Uh, Chinese e uh, EV ecosystem is well established. Uh, the cost structures are much more competitive than the global players. Their technological innovation 
on manufacturing of EVs is far ahead than many of the other global players. Uh, so def definitely that's something to watch out for. Uh, and if it enters India, it can uh, definitely make a big impact. Uh, barring the brand uh, uh, aspiration of Chinese players uh, is something that is yet to get established in India. But one needs to see how the political scenario plays out as well, because uh, how Chinese enter India, whether it's into partnership, because probably they may not be able to enter uh, on a standalone basis, uh, is something that needs to be uh, seen. Uh, but definitely there's something uh, Chinese players are yet to be, uh, you know, are, are keenly watched out for in terms of competitive scenario. Okay, let's also talk about stocks before we head to the next guest, uh, you know, because at the end of the day for our viewers, that's what matters. A quick comment there, Jay, you were saying that a lot of new participants now entering with, a, I mean, not new participants, but a lot of new launches expected in the next one year from the likes of m and etc. Uh, Tata Motors is the top player in the market right now. Uh, which is the next, uh, you know, competitor that could give a strong competition to Tata Motors in this space? Because stocks like m and etc. are already sitting at fresh 52-week highs. Do you think they can build on to these gains? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, new launches that are expected, uh, apart from Tata Motors, which already have uh, a decent enough of models in India, the next leg of new launches is expected to come out from uh, m and uh, The next year, probably, we'll also see Maruti. We'll also see Hyundai, uh, Kia. So, you know, uh, the top five players uh, of uh, the passenger vehicle industry in India, uh, you know, only one of them has a meaningful presence in EVs in India. And I think over the next 12 to 18 months, you'll see the other four also incrementally uh, coming with uh, EV launches. So I think this space is expected to get heated up, currently at very low penetration levels, but expected to uh, move up going forward with incremental launches. Okay, so on m and what is your uh, target price and on Tata Motors as well? Yeah, so we have a, a positive rating both on m and and Tata Motors uh, uh, currently. Uh, and uh, we'll be reviewing our target prices closer to the earnings season. Okay, we have Anil Srivastava now, the former principal advisor at Niti Aayog, joining in. Uh, Mr. Srivastava, thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, you know, I just want to understand from your end, what is the uh, impact that the new incentives provided by the government would have on the EV ecosystem? Because as we were just discussing with uh, Mr. Kale as well, uh, the EV penetration, despite everything, is still so low at barely 3%, right, in the passenger vehicle space. Uh, what has been done so far, which could help increase penetration and what more do you think needs to be done on this front? Good morning. Uh, well, the penetration is as per our expected lines. The EVs are picking up uh, pretty well and pretty fast. And that was uh, that what was uh, expected uh, uh, by the government uh, uh, when we had started uh, making projections from in 2017 about the 2030 and uh, further from there. So it's moving in a pretty in, in the right direction, and I'm very happy to see as to what we were planning. The events have started unfolding in the right uh, direction. Now uh, the incentives have played a very critical role. The frame two, which we drafted, uh, it's played an important role in promoting uh, the EVs in the two wheelers and the three wheeler uh, segment. And from there, I think we have now started moving towards the personal vehicle uh, segment. Now what more needs to be done is uh, that. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the government has been uh, extremely proactive in taking forward this uh, uh, electric vehicle movement. Uh, but along with that, now the, uh, the government has to move forward even uh, faster. And uh, one very critical thing is uh, the standardization, which is very much needed. And that is probably will give a lot of consolation and what a lot of relief to the buyer in the sense that... Uh, uh, you have to have the standardizations in terms of the batteries, in terms of the charging uh, protocols, and so that uh, the swapping policy, which has been not announced after being uh, introduced, but it is not uh, finalized, that may also take shape, number one. Uh, number two, the Indian buyer is uh, very circumspect, and uh, I still feel that uh, there's a tremendous scope for having an appropriate vehicle for the Indian buyer and the Indian segment. And that is uh, very much needed. We need to have a, a vehicle, uh, yes, in the upper segment, yes, there are models which are coming into India, but in another two, three years, we will have a large number of uh, uh, personal vehicles in the market, which will uh, be a big relief to the buyer. For the two-wheeler okay. and three-wheeler uh, segment, we have already crossed over the tipping point and the adoption is pretty quick. But there again, uh, uh, the opportunities which are there for the startups and the new companies are tremendous. I would say that the 
sky sky is the limit and uh, the open field has been uh, provided for the companies to come forward and provide uh, I mean make <laughs> goal make the goal so this is uh, something which is uh, which is there the, the disruption which is uh, taking place in the automobile sector and in the mobility sector is impacting mm -hmm. the life uh, too much that's Got what it. you uh, made, you made uh, sure mr shivastava you made an important point about how the indian consumer is rather price sensitive so bringing the price point lower is something that you know a lot of the oems are looking at that's one thing the other thing is range anxiety right charging infrastructure is something that has also dissuaded a lot of people uh, for or, or rather the lack of the charging infrastructure has dissuaded people from uh, switching to evs uh, do you think enough has been done on that front and what more do you think the government can do the prices will come down uh, automatically the battery prices are coming down the battery which comprises about 35 to 40 percent of the price of the ev and as we had projected uh, even it has come down from the hundred dollars per kilowatt hour further down so the prices are bound to come down and they will come down quickly and i mean it's very clear you have a better product that is what you have to sell that is what you have to pay make the people uh familiar and you have to sell a better product which is which is extremely easy to my uh, my uh, perspective so the prices are certainly going to uh, come down now the range anxiety uh, as i understand is not really an issue because uh, the charging speeds are going up and there are uh, fast chargers a uh, lot of research has gone into it uh, the fast chargers there are chargers which charge the vehicle within 15 to uh, 20 minutes of uh, time but yes of course if you want to charge it at home then you have to have a slow charger but you can always have a fast charger as well so uh, the charging range anxiety is certainly there because we have not been able to create the infrastructure and that is where again the government has to have a policy where but he uh, the government has to provide the proper environment for the startups to have the charging uh, infrastructure all along the roads in the cities and the highways and everywhere for that matter. There are a large number of startups which have come up in the areas of charging infrastructure, those who are working. And they are, uh, uh, I mean, uh, doing an extremely good job in the sense that announcing the things and uh, taking up the thing, installing the charging station. But yes, uh, it has not yet reached to the point where uh, the buyer one would be comfortable in buying an electric vehicle. So that is Correct. something uh, which, is, which is happening. And yes, uh, the government needs to put uh, uh, have the standardization for the charging protocols and then provide support for setting up the charging stations. That is very much uh, needed. But it is a kind of a non-issue because the charging speed along with that are also going up. Uh, that is also uh, true. All right. Uh, fair enough. Uh, very valid points made there. We would have loved to chat some more. We'll do this at another time. Jay and Mr. Shivasava, thank you so much uh, for joining us and putting the spotlight on, uh, you know, the uh, Tesla, of course, the possibility of Tesla disrupting the Indian EV market and what the EV market could grow to from here.